Well, hey, it's Skip, and we're back with another speed run. This is a highlight from one of my streams. Again, I do have a VOD channel in case you miss any streams and want to watch it. can go over subscribe to Skip McVod. I'll link to that in the description here. But I did want to highlight this. I was doing the fresh file run. My previous PB was a 1443, and I was able to get that time actually cut down significantly. I wanted to actually highlight the run and actually talk through what's going on here. I've made a few adjustments since I actually made kind of my video about anyone can can beat dead cells in 20 minutes and doing things a little bit differently noticing a few different patterns and i wanted to highlight them uh, but first and foremost you know definitely going through and focusing on trying to get as many of these scrolls as possible i'd really kind of talked about last time how if you're gonna go do it you can really skip through it and not necessarily get all the scrolls uh, it actually will allow you to go significantly faster if you can get as many of those especially the the stats that go with the weapons that you're going for. And I've actually switched up a little bit what that I've done as well because I was watching a little bit of uh, Vord's 0 to 5 BC speedruns, which are absolutely insane. I'll link to that as well in case you haven't actually seen it. I'd recommend checking it out and taking a look at it. It's crazy where you start from a fresh file and you go all the way through the end of 5 BC. Not something I'm able to do. I'm, I'm not um, that crazy or capable in any way, but uh, it is a fun thing to watch. But one thing that uh, Vord was actually doing was uh, using tactics instead of using uh, brutality, which actually on a fresh file opens up a little bit stronger options, just more consistent from a speed perspective, uh, either using the whip or using the double nox, the uh, double nox bow, which is a really strong bow that's opened up from the start. And then also a couple of other skills as well. Wolf traps will scale with it as will the slicers. So you've got a couple of really good skill options too that go with tactics. And so you're seeing me here picking that, getting a whip actually early on, which is actually very helpful. I accidentally picked up the blueprint as well that you had seen. You don't necessarily want to do that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, basically throw our skill down. As you'll see here, kind of chew right through this elite at the vine rune very, very easily. It's something that uh, we didn't have to really spend much time worrying about. Actually, I don't think he even got a shot off, so really fast way of getting through there as well but otherwise we're just making our way back through the promenade here like we've done before dodging enemies as well one thing as, as that i would also uh, recommend doing especially if you can pick up something like the whip or something that allows you to take care of the garbage mobs like uh, the birds or the bats or something else like that pretty easily or even honestly the hunters are pretty easy to take down in two shots uh, because you, you kill enough enemies you do get a speed boost that is something that if you find yourself getting swarmed you'll see that a little bit later as well do focus on actually taking out some of those enemies because then it can give you a little bit of a speed boost i'm not doing it here because there's just not enough around me to really give me a difference but i see i'm trying a little bit to get some speed boost going uh, but you don't really get swarmed enough on this level with the bats usually or the birds or whatever they are to really make a difference but i'm going to go ahead and it looks like i am getting a little bit of a speed boost here so it can make a little bit of a difference i'm also looking down to see if i can see any stats scrolls kind of in those areas where you would drop down and take the elevator down normally during a casual play so i am doing a little bit of that you can see there i did effectively get that speed boost and that'll help me actually get through the level pretty quickly or a lot more quickly obviously when you're running with that boost another change as well coming up uh is you know that of really how I'm focusing on doing the damage for the uh, initial fights with the concierge after I get through ramparts itself. Uh, it depending upon the weapon set that I have, if I've got something like a really good ranged weapon, like a double knox bow, or sometimes going with the uh, the whip, you can actually focus a little bit on trying to get the legendary after the concierge. Try to go through and get that hit list can be worth it uh, you're not going to get a random legendary like you would if you got a legendary dropping just on the floor somewhere in one of the biomes but it will be a legendary of something that you already have unlocked which 
could be really good. So you get a legendary weapon, that's going to be a really good weapon for you to use. So we are going to, we, we might go ahead and try to do that. It really, really depends. Uh, going for a hit list on the concierge can be really slow, especially if you go brutality. So it's not something that if, if I was using something like a traditional weapon, that I would really want to focus on doing that. And, you know, I'm not saying this run is perfect by any means. Definitely still do make mistakes, but it was something where I was able to string together a pretty decent run to, 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 to improve my time significantly. I'm certainly hopeful that I'll be able to get other speed runs going. And you can see there a couple of really lame assault shield dashes. But, uh, you know, hey, we're trying. We're, we're, we're getting better. We're getting better at the game. And there I accidentally take the wrong stat. A little bit frustrated at myself because I took brutality. I'm so used to taking brutality most of the time. Uh, that uh, I, I just grabbed brutality, so. Uh, but you definitely want to be trying to take tactics as much as possible. But one stats roll is going to make that big of a difference. It'll still go to, uh, you know, improve my overall stats, even though it's not going directly to the damage on my weapons. There was no hint on this level, so we're going straight through. Heading down, and we're going to fight the concierge now. And if you're wondering about the timer down at the bottom, the timer on the right, the actual time that you can see rolling is running with real time. But then when the splits actually happen through the auto splitter, it's comparing that against in-game time. So that's why you see it kind of... Uh, even though we're at, you know, s 6 minutes and 20 seconds, it's not saying we're behind because the in-game time, uh, we it's it's a little bit, you know, the, the, obviously real time is ahead of that. So you can see I'm going to try a little bit, see if I can get through without taking damage, uh, but I'm not going to focus too much on it because not getting the legendary isn't necessarily worth completely missing out on everything. But I am trying to stay a decent amount away because I did take so uh, I did take support and tranquility. So tranquility will give me a little bit of additional damage so long as I'm not too close to the concierge. And then support will give me additional damage when I'm next to a deployed skill. So you can see that's where I'm getting that two. Then he gets closer, I've got that one. So I am here doing pretty good job staying away from all of his attacks. But uh, that's probably gonna, I think that changes here. I think I take a cheap shot and at that point I'm just like, you know what, ah, yep, cheap shot right there. I'm like, you know what, screw it. Let's just go for it. Let's just go and attack and we're gonna get hit and we're gonna get damaged. It's no big deal. Let's go through and do this as fast as possible. So, I mean, I don't wanna necessarily die, but definitely trying to get through and just damage him as much as I can. And there he goes down. So pretty decent fight lost, just a little bit of time compared to my other time. I do want to look for some wolf traps. I hoped they dropped. They did, because that's actually going to help me significantly when I actually go and fight the timekeeper a little bit. And so I want to make sure I've got what I need to actually fight her pretty well. And what I pick up in here, I can, uh, I can upgrade my assault shield or I can take a free stat scroll. We're going to take a free stat. Because I already have an assault shield. I'm not really doing a lot of damage with that. Now, something I did notice is that with that guy there, uh, if you have a good layout, you can actually uh, assault shield right over the top of him. And then you kind of skip that animation where he forces you to talk to him about putting cells into the forge. Didn't get it that time. But most times with most floor layouts, you can vault right over the top of him and not trigger that actual, not necessarily cutscene, but that dialogue, I suppose, that you don't need to have anymore. Uh, so from here, I'm trying to find, of course, the key door as soon as possible. And uh, I try, I'm try. i going to actually use the checking the map here to see exactly where that is. I don't quite see it yet, so I'm going to go on up. Hopefully, maybe it's over here somewhere. Uh, up. It doesn't look like it's anywhere over here. So we're going to go ahead and take out some enemies so we can get some of a speed boost. I am noticing a little bit of a, a star on some scrolls here. So we're going to just use our assault shield. Scroll drops way down, so we pick that up. We don't have the key yet, but I do notice that uh, it's a pretty good layout for if I want to try to get the skip across the middle with the assault shield. So the key's back here towards the beginning. A little bit of backtracking. Not too bad, though. So we'll go ahead and grab that key, and we'll get back out. And now we can see if we can get some speed to get over the top. So we do have some additional speed going on, so... Here's hoping that we can use that to actually get out. And I have to make my way out. I'm getting a little bit lost, and we just lost our speed boost. So unfortunately, 
doesn't look like I'm actually going to be able to get enough speed to get over the top like I'm hoping. Uh, because I would need to have that in order to, to use these platforms to get over the top. So instead of trying to do that over and over again, we're just going to go through, find the other key, and get out. I've been able to pretty consistently, when I've got something like a whip or some type of a fast item, make it so that I get the speed boost so that I can get through the middle and kind of skip having to find the second key. So uh, it's been it's a pretty effective way of of actually doing it. So I'm going to go over here and see if the key is over here on the right. Sometimes it is, uh, as if, since I can't quite see it yet. And it looks like the key is right here off to the right. Worth checking if you don't see it immediately, that it can be kind of off in the area on the right. A little bit interesting key room over here. We'll go ahead and grab that. And since I missed that, I'm like, you know what? Well, I'm already just walk my way back over because not worth hopping my way all the way around. So we just go in. Not really worth taking out even the trash mobs here because I'm right by the end all the way over to the right. So we're just going to go ahead and go on through. A little bit slow stilt village compared to my previous time, but still not bad. Still not bad at all. Do some quick upgrades to the weapons, get them to plus quality. I'll look to re-roll them a little bit later, but for now, just getting through Clock Tower, it's not as important as it could be. Because who knows, I might find a better weapon anyways, so let's not waste too much time. The best weapon that I found for the Timekeeper, eh, just the kind of from the stock ones, uh, really is going to be, if I'm going on if I'm going on tactics, it's going to be that Double Knox uh, bow that I will use. Now, I'm looking here for this specific thing where I teleport in. I'm hoping that I'm going to find the key... Uh, in one of there's two of those usually in a level and the key is through one of them so you don't really know until you get to the top if you pick the right one but uh, we're going to go ahead and check and see if it is so on up we go trying to not get trapped and unfortunately now i can have two of those elites chasing me through the level but I did find the key, so I want to go ahead and clear this guy out so he doesn't mess with me while I'm trying to get the key, especially because he's invisible. So we'll just go ahead and clear him out. Hopefully he drops something great he does not, and leave that on the ground. I don't want to exchange my uh, any of my scrolls for, for two survival. That's just not going to go with my build at all. But we have the key, so now we're just going to find the exit. The exit's going to be up one of the non-teleported sides. So we're just going to make sure if we, if we see a teleportation entrance door that we go to a different one and hope that we luck out in finding the right one. This is a little bit harder sometimes to find the actual uh, entrance. So we're going to go ahead and go, I think, straight up here uh, until we can't go up no more or until we find one of those doors. The Assault Shield, very helpful for kind of navigating, getting around, because as you're jumping up, it's sometimes hard to see what side is that ledge going to be on, so it's helpful to use that. I get a little bit tagged there, it's no big deal. Uh, for, for, for moving kind of from side to side if you're on the wrong side of the ledge. And we're just going to go and leave that alone. This is a weird way to loop itself back around. I'm not quite sure where the exit is, but I have a good guess that it's probably in this short tower here. So we're going to go up and we're guessing here, and we actually guessed correctly. We had a pretty good clock tower here, uh, making up just a little bit of time that we had lost when we were going through Stilt Village, because it was a slow Stilt Village, unfortunately. So we'll go ahead and go on through. We are going to go ahead and uh, refill on our potion. And yeah, you can see that we made up about 30 seconds worth of time on that clock tower. So I will definitely take it. In fact, it's a gold split there, so it's the fastest that I'd ever actually gotten through clock tower on my fresh file attempts which a lot of my fresh fall attempts actually tend to reset before we even get there. As you can see the counter, it's my 103rd attempt. So I've been doing a fair amount of these, a lot of them pretty early on, trying to figure out a good strategy. I got lifted way up in the air right there. Again, I'm not trying to worry about the legendary here. I'm just trying to use as much damage as possible in as short a time as I can. I've got a pretty good whip. I got pretty good skills going on as well. We got a lot of burning oil going on on the ground. So uh, pretty able to just kind of keep her anytime she's about to attack, just kind of give her a little nudge with our assault shield. And uh, she stays pretty much without doing very much at all. Now, fortunately there, I had tanked a little bit of damage, but we got our parry to finish off and weird animation by the timekeeper. She's kind of in the middle of an attack, but that's okay. And we're gonna look for our light speed and pick that up. And we do have a whip over there. I just noticed out of the corner of my eye, 
Yeah, it's too upgraded. We can upgrade that to a plus. It should be a little bit better once we upgrade it. And away we go. Now, I make a little bit of a mistake coming back here because I forget that I actually need to upgrade the whip. And so I kind of bash right on through, and, and then all of a sudden I'm like, wait a minute, that, that's that's where I need to upgrade. Like, you unlock light speed, and, and wait, I need to get the whip upgraded. And so, yeah, it's well, there's, there, there are mistakes were made, you know. So I get all the way over here and realize, wait a minute, I'll, sure, I'll go ahead and refill this, but I gotta go all the way back. I gotta go all the way back. <laughs> so a little, little bit of time loss, what you gonna do? So there we go, we're gonna go through. It looks like I don't even bother re-rolling the whip at all, spend any time figuring that out. I figure it's probably strong enough for what we need to do to get through the castle. Now, hopefully we can make it through the castle in a good amount of time. Castle is difficult to navigate because you've got two paths, one path that will lead you to a shop, another that will lead you to the end doors. If you cannot figure out what path you're on, you can end up going to dead ends or just wasting your time going through areas that you don't need to go to. Obviously, I'm not gonna go for all three keys, uh, so I'm just gonna go for uh, two, or all three keys, so I'm just gonna go through two doors, the first two doors that I find, and uh, just see from there. Now, if uh, one, smart way of doing it is you can after your first door just uh go back the way that you came so you can continue to see if you get to a dead end or to a shop don't have to necessarily always do it this way that's one way of doing it so nice thing is i'm able to stay away from him but i'm going to go ahead and check the other end because i had a feeling i was on uh the a dead end path so i'm going to go ahead and go through anyways i probably should have in retrospect stuck to the plan i had before because I get dead ended a couple times in this run. It's really not a not a great castle. Uh, it's not definitely not my best way of navigating and trying to figure it out. I end up backtracking back on my original path a couple of times. In fact, there you can see I figured I'm at the shop. So now I do know I'm on the wrong side. So once I find a door, so long as I haven't doubled back around, I figure I can go through here and be on the side where there is a uh, where, where we've we've got the end that's at least my what i'm figuring or what i'm thinking but uh, you'll soon see i wasn't quite right about that so there's still definitely a lot of time that i can make up in this run because unfortunately i made some bad decisions as per uh what i was doing now actually i just straight up made a mistake i didn't realize that for some reason i didn't realize uh i was on the shop path and i went back to the side that had the shop path which is the wrong way. I wanted to go to the other side. Maybe I wanted to see what the end was over here, but uh, I, I really need to make my way over to the other end. Uh, and, <laughs> and as you'll see, I get a little bit confused because I'm completely backwards around which side of the castle I believe that I'm on at this point. Um, but I ended up lucking into finding the double doors and getting through anyways. A little bit backing around on myself, but you know what? In the end, we found it, we found where we were going, we found where we needed to be, and we get through. You can see me using my light speed there early on, because I need it automatically is unlinked, but I need to give it about 10 seconds so that I can actually, before I can actually use the hyper overall in, in the throne room here. I think I'm probably about seven or eight seconds right now. You're gonna see me waiting for just a few seconds to make sure I'm not on cooldown, and then getting first try hyper straight through, which always feels good when you get that first try, and we get through it. So even though I had a little bit of turnaround in the castle, it actually was a gold split. It's actually the, the best I had gone through the castle. I don't feel great about it, but it was a pretty good castle. Clock Tower, again, the best, but we had some, some slow times in Stilt Village. Uh, slow, a little bit slow fighting the timekeeper herself, but everything else was pretty good. There's still a lot of time to be saved in this run. I'm hoping I can get below uh, the 13 minute mark is actually my, my um, below the 13 minute mark is my next time to get to, because as you'll see here, when I end, I'm at 1347. So I, if I can shave off, you know, 48 seconds or, you know, 47 and change on the milliseconds and get to a sub 13, that's kind of my next goal I'm shooting for. I'll be doing that on stream from time to time. So definitely check me out if you haven't found over on Twitch. Find me there, Skip McLazy. As always, of course, you can find links to my Discord as well as the Rogue HQ Dis Discord uh, community as well. But thanks everyone for watching and we will see you next time. Bye.